This no taters, Uncle Jed? Don't hardly look at you, through. Well, it ain't pretty near two dozen. <laughs> Better fetch me the peelings. I got a feeling that's where most of the taters is. Yes, How's it taste, Uncle Jed? Pitiful. <laughs> Maybe them peelings will help. Dump them in. <laughs> Doggone, it just don't seem right, us doing women's work, whilst Granny sets in front of that TV set all day. Ever since she found out it wasn't a washing machine, she ain't been more than three feet away from it. She's like a youngin' with a new toy. Like Ellie with a new critter. How come she ain't in her doing this cooking? Yeah, through. I just don't believe Ellie was cut out for fixing vittles. Never forget the time she made that gooseberry pie. Ruined our best goose and a whole bucket of berries. <laughs> you, mean, you mean she put together? She did, and it was a mess, I'll tell you. I got her and Skipper out looking for stuff to put in this here. Pa, Skipper found some onion. Onion? Hey, they ought to go dandy in here. <laughs> go on, Skipper, give them to Pa. Thank you, Skipper. These here Beverly Hills onions ain't got a lot of bite to them. The top sure do flower out, pretty. Get them. Wash these and drop them in the pot. Tops and all? Yeah, we eat all the flavor we can get. <laughs> Where'd you find them, Ellie? Over to the Drysdales. Did you ask the Drysdales, could you buy us some onion? Oh, yes, sir, Pa. Miss Drysdale says go around to the kitchen door and get some from the cook. But Skipper found some on the way, and we didn't have to bother nobody. <laughs> Fine and dandy. <laughs> Drop them in the pot, Jethro. Don't just stand there sniffing them. <laughs> Would you like some more? There's a whole big patch of them. A few more might help, Ellie. That stew ain't got too much going for it. Come on, Skipper. <laughs> let's go pull up some more onions. How's it going, boy? Better? Still pitiful. <laughs> Even these onions ain't doing nothing. We just got to get Granny to help us. You ain't gonna pry her loose from that TV set now. This is the time her favorite is on. You mean that big strapping cowboy star? That's right. Marshal Quirt Manley, two gun tamer of the Wild West. Look out, Quirt! <laughs> Them rustlers are sneaking up behind you, fixing to shoot you in the back. Look out! Oh, they got you. Oh, they got you again. Oh, you're done for now, Quirt. That's it, you dirty coward. Right off and leave him with a back full of bullets. Attaboy, Quirt, after him. Get him. Tell you where they's headed, Quirt? To town to hide in the saloon. Granny. Pshh. It won't do you no good to hide in that saloon, you dirty yellow coward. Quirt will find you. He'll get you. Granny. Pshh. I... Yonder comes Quirt. Riding like the wind. That's it. That's where they are. Go get them. It won't do you no good to hide in that saloon. I told Quirt where to look. Say your prayers, yellow bellies. I'm coming in. <laughs> Is he gonna tackle that whole saloon full of bad men all by himself? You betcha. Quirt Manley don't need no help. Even with 30 or 40 bullets in him, he's more than a man for... Shh! He's lighting into him. <laughs> See, Jed? I told you he didn't need no help. Look at them run, the yellow bellies. He's right smart of a man, all right. Oh, Quirt chased them clean out of town. Next time, I won't go so easy on you. <laughs> yes, sir, Granny. He sure is a rip-snorting fighter, old Quirt. Well, look behind her. Now he's fixing to wrestle his horse. No, no, Jim. After a fight, he always hugs old Silver Tree. <laughs> <laughs> And then he rides off into the sunset. <laughs> See? Here they go. Fine figure of a man. Sits tall in the saddle. 
Well, don't he have no sweetheart like Hoot Gibson always had? No. Ain't no girl good enough for Quirt Manley. He only loves his horse and his dog. <laughs> Him and Ellie sure hit it off. Both of them being fond of critters, and neither one of them having a sweetheart. Yonder goes the man for Ellie May. <laughs> if he can tame the whole wild west, I reckon he can tame one wild girl. Leastwise, he'd have a fighting chance. Whereabouts would a fella go to find old Quirk? Off into the sunset, I reckon. That's where they always go. <laughs> Might a big place to commence looking. <laughs> Sorry, Skipper, but you must not uproot Mrs. Drysdale's prize, Bulba, Cody, and Burnham. <laughs> That's the botanical term for daffodil. <laughs> now, if you're a good boy, uh-oh, you're a good boy. Jane has a reward for you. A genuine Port Manley cowboy outfit. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you like it. <laughs> oh, howdy, Miss Jane. Greetings, Jethro. And how is my strong, handsome, manly hero today? Well, you'll have to ask Granny. She's the one that watches him. What's his suit? Quirt Manley. Oh, you thought I was referring to the television star. Well, I know you're hungry, Skipper. So am I, but this stew ain't nearly ready yet. Stew? Jethro, what are you putting in there? Everything I can lay my hands on. I ain't got no flavor at all. <laughs> oh, no, 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 Jethro. Not tea. <laughs> oh, you poor dear boy. You need a woman to do this kind of work for you. <laughs> That's a fact. You can say that again. There happens to be such a woman available. I know, but I don't stand much chance with her. Would you like her to take over right now and prepare you a delicious meal? <laughs> I sure would. Then drop to your knees, my handsome one, and ask me the question that is in your heart. <laughs> Please, will you go get Granny? <laughs> yes! My answer is <laughs> Granny! <laughs> get up off that floor and stir the stew. Miss <laughs> Jane. Will you stay in and have victuals with it, such as they is? Oh, well, yes, but why not let me do... Hey, Skipper! Come on, Skipper, let's wait for the treat. <laughs> Ellie, what are you doing? We play an ape. Look here. <laughs> Ellie, no, please, be careful. <laughs> I sure would like to know where to find that quirt manly. Well, if you mean the television star, he lives right here in Beverly Hills. Uh... He does? Could we get him to meet up with Ellie May? I'm sure Mr. Drysdale could arrange it. I sure wish he'd hurry. That little monkey's liable to get himself hurt. <laughs> uh, I see you got some fiddle. Well, yes, sir, Uncle Jed. Told the fella down at the store about Granny watching TV all day instead of cooking. So he sold me these TV fiddles, all packaged up and ready to eat. Well, that's fine. Now, when Quirk Manley gets here, we got something else to offer him besides that pitiful stew. Is Quirt Manley coming here? That's right. Now, I want you to get the truck around back so when he rides up here, his horse won't shy at it. <laughs> yes, sir. And see your guns clean good. We'll ask him to give us some shooting lessons. But we know how to shoot. Not like that, rascal. Granny says he can drop seven, eight rustlers with one shot. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't all. He's got a couple six shooters that shoot all day without reloading. Well, I can't wait to meet that rascal. <laughs> Mr. Clappett, Quirt Manley just turned into your driveway. Quirt Manley! Yes, I knew Mr. Drysdale could arrange it. Quirt could put the whole bowl full of you. Come on, Randy. <laughs> Miss Jane, you find Ellie May and get her into a dress. Yeah. about them two gunshots? Brace yourself, Jed. We're liable to find 30 or 40 rustlers laying out front. <laughs> Don't shoot, Quirt. We ain't rustlers. We's friends, Miss Manley. That we is. How come you ain't riding silver triggers? Did them dirty rustlers get him? <laughs> we'll have to find him, but I ain't no Quirt Manley. Jed. 
There's only one man like him. Why, he's the biggest, the bravest, the fightingest, the strongest, the hard ridingest, and the straight shootingest man alive. Are you people putting me on? <laughs> Who said that? Was somebody back here? Is that you spoke, Mr. Manley? Oh, oh yeah, well, well, sure it was. <laughs> uh, I got a sore throat. Sometimes the voice just sneaks out that way. Well, come on in, Quirt. I'll doctor you. Ain't got the time, ma'am. Ain't got the time. Still out. I'll autograph a couple of pictures for you before I go. <laughs> There you are. Well, so long now. I got to be driving off into the sunset. <laughs> Wait a minute, uh, what about Ellie Mae? Ellie Mae? Well, sure. <laughs> there you are. Mr. Plowman, Ellie Mae is swinging through the trees with Skipper and refuses to come down. I'll go fetch her down if you can keep Mr. Manley from leaving. Please don't go, Quirch. Well, sorry, ma'am, but gotta hit the trail. Well, so long, y'all. Uh, hold on there, Mr. Manley. Uh, my boss, Mr. Drysdale, has been speaking with your boss, the sponsor, and he wants you to stay here and meet Ellie Mae. Oh, well, in that case, I, I reckon I could spare a couple of moments. Bless you, Quirt. Oh, bless you, Quirt. Ellie Mae is the wildest young'un that ever come down from the hills. But if there's one man alive who can tame her, it's Big Quirt Manley. Well, thank you, ma'am. <laughs> Thank you. I wish I was ten years younger. <laughs> I tell you right now, I'd give that Ellie May a run for her money. <laughs> I always was partial to tall men. <laughs> <laughs> Just once. Well, <laughs> <laughs> All right, May, I don't want no more arguments from you. You get up them back stairs and change into a dress. Well, why can't I wear cowboy clothes like Fort Manley? Because a man like Manley wants a woman that's womanly now. <laughs> <laughs> I've ever seen a swimming chicken. Shucks, that's nothing. I got a cat that swims too, and a rooster that plays dead, a dog that climbs trees, and a turkey that shakes hands. My goodness, I just love animals like these. That is the little ones. Big animals like horses kind of scare me. But you ride like the wind on TV. Oh, that's not me, Ellie Mae. That's my double. He does my riding, shooting, fighting, falling off cliffs, and things like that. I have another double who does the deep voice for me. I call him my double double. What do you do, Mr. Manley? Oh, please, Ellie Mae. Call me Henry. That's my real name, you see. I'm only on the show because my father's the sponsor. They just use me for close-ups. They say I have a sincere face. Got a nice face. I like it. Oh, thank you, Ellie Mae. I like your face, too. And now that I come to think of it, I like the rest of you. <laughs> Did you notice that that rhymes? Yeah. 
<laughs> well, that's what I really like to do. Make up poems for girls like you. Well, there goes another one right there. Yeah. <laughs> they just pop out of me at times. <laughs> would you like me to make up a poem about a raccoon? I sure would, and Elmer would too. Very well. I like the raccoon because he is so filled with goodness and generosity. Well, look how he gives us his skin for use on our garments and other apparel. <laughs> In addition, raccoons act natural and don't put on airs as do skunks and old turnips. <laughs> Too. He's the one that ought to be on TV. Hi, Ellie Mae. Hey, excuse me, little fella. Can you tell me where I could find Mr. Quirt Manley? I noticed you was toting his hat for him. Well, this here is Quirt Manley, Jethro. Stop joking, Ellie Mae. I'm in a hurry. I want to ask him if I can borrow his pretty car to drive around the block a couple times. Oh, yes, you may, Jethro. The car belongs to my father, so it's all right. Yeah, who? Hey, uh, do you think he'd tear me to pieces if I borrowed his hat, too? I can promise you he won't. Yeah, I did it, no! Yeah, I did it. Uh, Mr. Manley, can I have a word with you, please? I know what you're going to say, Mr. Clampett, and, and I don't blame you for wanting to shoot me. Oh, we ain't nothing like that at all. I just want to talk to you about Granny. I guess I must have been a terrible disappointment to her. She is a mite let down, but I think we can pull her out of it if we all tug together. Now, first off, I'm going to learn you how to shoot a gun, and Ellie here is going to learn you how to fight. I'm afraid of guns, but I'm not like learning to fight. <laughs> Ma'am, you hadn't ought to jump in a car like that, especially with me going pertinent at 30 miles an hour. I'd do anything to sit next to Court Manley. But my name ain't Court Manley. Don't think you can fool me. I've seen you on television. And I've dreamed of the day when I could get close enough to throw my arms around you and kiss you. My darling Court. Honest, ma'am, my name is... Your name is what? My name is Kurt Manley. <laughs> I tell you, Granny, that little feller is a crack shot. He can stand on our front porch and light a match clean out by the front gate with a six-shooter. I don't believe it. Come on out. He'll show you. Jen tells me you're pretty good with them six-shooters. Granny, he's a blue-tailed marvel. He's gonna whip out them guns and bam, 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 light them three matches stuck in the ground down there this side of the wall. <laughs> I believe it when I see it. All right. Where are you going? Oh, I can't bear to watch him. He puts me plumb to shame. Well, come in shooting. <laughs> you, you count to three, and I'll draw and fire. One, two, three. <laughs> well, I gotta admit, that's pretty good. <laughs> Why, you ain't even drawed your guns, you little faker, you! <laughs> But Ellie's right fond of them. You see, Granny, some heroes is fighters and some heroes is lovers, and I reckon that little cowboy is a lover. Oh, boss. <laughs> I'm gonna get my shotgun and blast the inside out of that lion TV set, and if he ain't gone by then, he's next. Oh, Granny, wait. <laughs> hey, look at that. Look at what I got. Get through. Where'd you get all these girls? Well, they think I'm a rich TV star. <laughs> Say, uh, if you girls caught in the money, I'll show you how you can divide up that whole roll. Oh, He's a little cowboy inside there. All you got to do is go in there and make a big fuss over him and uh, take on about how cute he is. Will you do it? Sure. <laughs> Jethro, as soon as they show Granny what a ladies' man little quirt is. Yeah. Yeah. The house is swarming with girls. Yeah, 
Can you see who he's all crazy about? You betcha. He's a real star, that little feller. It's time to say goodbye to Jed Dog his kin. They would like to thank you folks for kindly dropping in. You're all invited back next week to this locality to have a heap and help us of their hospitality. Hillbilly, that is. Set a spell. Take your shoes off. Y'all come back. This has been a Filmways presentation.